Ain't that hella peaceful. Nature is awesome and mighty to behold. How many million years has this been? We've got this layering, cutting back. Crazy. So I'm feeling a little inspired today. Talk a little bit about some gear. It's always fun. I felt like talking with you today about this bad boy right here. <clears throat> this is the uh, Spyderco Pacific Salt. It's part of my one of my EDC blades. The Pacific Salt <clears throat> is made, as you probably know, H1 steel. Uh, a lot of people on YouTube have done a really great job displaying the um, rust resistance of this steel. And uh, they talk about the um, work hardening, that as you sharpen this knife and as you use this knife, the edge gets harder. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's The Pacific Salt is based on the um, Endura 3. It has the same Endura 3 pocket clip. It has the un... Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't have the liners. It's all plastic handle. Um, this, has been a, this has been a bit of a project knife for me, a little hobby knife. Um, I had it, uh, as you probably know, the top portion of the blade usually extends out this way, and I had it milled out to put a wave on it, because I wanted my... It'd be, it'd be awesome if all my knives had waves on them, but, you know. But this is one of them. I think a, a wave, to me, is an indispensable tool for this being a self-defense knife. Um, but I really don't like the grind. I, when I ordered it and bought it, I didn't quite realize it was going to be a hollow grind. As an EDC blade, you know, that's whatever, whatever. Um, cutting packages, you know, and, you know, cutting up bad guys. <laughs> and it don't matter <laughs> if you got a hollow grind or not, that thing's going to cut. But, um, you know, I had originally thought of this as being a, a little bit of an outdoorsy blade, maybe a backpacking blade. And the cutting performance is just not that good with this knife. I can't feather stick real well with it. I find that I don't get a good, like, I find that when I, when I, when I, it pops out, it just kind of pops out of the wood, or it just kind of hangs in it. Um, and I don't like that. Um, here's another, and, 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 you know, so I sit here asking myself, well, why? Why'd they do a fucking hollow grind? They do saber grinds and fucking full flat grinds all day long. They're the ones who are punking everybody out by fucking putting out fucking real saber grinds instead of this hollow grind crap. Um, but, um, I found out that there is a reason why. And I found out not only through my research, uh, but uh, my research coupled with my experience with the knife. As you can see, as I bend it in the light, hopefully you can see, right in here, you see that discoloration? That is a warping of the steel that happened when it was ground out for the wave. Uh, this steel in this area is probably significantly weaker now than it was before. Potentially, I don't know, maybe not. Um, but it turns out that H1 steel, for whatever reason, and I'm not a knife, well, okay, I'm not, uh, I'm not an expert in steels, um, uh, you know, but I know a little bit about steel, and I know a little bit about knife making, and um, apparently, if you put enough pressure, and enough to grind this steel, uh, it'll warp, and that's, that's proof right there, that is proof. So what they have to do is they have to make, if they're using this steel, they have to uh, hollow grind it. They have to do that. Uh, they don't have the technology to do it any other way because what they have to do is they have to grind both sides at the same time. And the only way you can do that is with a wheel. With a, you know, circular, you can't do that with a, you know, with a jig, you know, you can't do that with a, a bandsaw, you know, or not a bandsaw, but like a belt sander, uh, you know, like you got to have a wheel. That's that's what you got to have, and that's why it's hollow grind. And that, for me, really kind of um, uh, depreciated my my uh, my opinion of the steel itself. 
um, because there's other steels out there that have some pretty remarkable um, uh, uh, rust resistance performance, like the oh oh I don't remember the name of it, but um, uh, N60 something. Uh, it's the steel that they use um, on the um, uh, the um, lone wolf landslide, and it's the steel that is used by uh, fox knives. If you're ever interested in any of the fox stuff, those guys out of Italy. So I guess it's um, more uh, more of a popular in European steel, um, but it's rust resistance, and that you know that fucking landslide's got a fucking high saber grind on it, not a fucking hollow grind. So I'm not a huge fan of this, and it really as a result of that, it really bumped down uh, my opinion of it. And as a result, I feel like it's an EDC knife and a self-defense blade. Um, it does have that fucking wave on that, and I tell you what, I don't have many knives that have that fucking wave on it. And a real wave, especially a nice big one, the guy gave me shit. He's like, oh, it doesn't need to be that big. And I was like, dude, I don't, <laughs> I like a big wave. I like the wave that's on the uh, Enduras, too. But, you know, having a real wave versus that zip tie mod, it, dude, you, you, you're you going to get that knife moving. That knife's going to come out fast. I know a lot of people don't like uh, waves. Actually, my uh, <laughs> my knife fighting instructor doesn't like waves because he had an experience where one uh, opened in his pocket and cut his hand. But I run mine almost like a lefty, right like that in the pocket so that I can pull uh, reverse grip and um, that is honestly in my opinion a more likely place to have this get something that, like your keys or something get caught on this and then open in your pocket and I did do I just haven't had a problem with it first of all I don't keep my keys in my right front pocket I got a purse like any sensible person should <laughs> and um, so I don't carry my keys in my pocket so I don't have that issue uh, maybe that's a part of it but um you know, most people roll it, you know, tip up, blade back, so that when they draw it, it'll be, you know, the out forward in their hand, like, yay. Here, let me switch hands. That might be an idea. Like that. So they want to pull it, the knife like this, so they have it stashed in their pocket like, th like that. And then all the other stuff in your pocket is down over this way. And I really don't see how it gets in the way. But anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, I like to have a big fat wave, and this does have a big fat wave, so that is the reason that it comes into my my system. Um, it, its corrosion resistance is definitely awesome, um, but you know because the grind is is uh, doesn't have as good a cutting performance as I prefer, um, and it's okay. I mean, for EDC, it works just fine. You know, for most most tasks, a fucking hollow grind is, is going to do you just right. And a lot of people out there hating on the hollow grind probably don't even use their knife enough that they need something more than a hollow grind. They're just knife snobs. I'm a knife snob too, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I use my shit. I love the fucking feather stick. I love the carbon wood. And these hollow grinds just don't 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 perform as well and I found that was the case I found that this did not perform as well as the Izula for wood carving and feather sticking and I thought actually thought that the uh, Izula performed rather rather poorly as a, at feather sticking and got got replaced by Mora because the Scandi grind just kicks both their asses um, but yeah it's a pretty good knife um, I recommend it, um, but it, it definitely has some competitors. Um, I definitely love Spyderco. They're real comfortable, big handle. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. Also, this is an issue, too. I didn't have this happen with this knife, but I had it happen with um, my old Endura 3, is that this pocket clip is in a prime position. Uh, uh, if you ever get this thing caught, and I would get this thing caught on my fucking couch, all the goddamn time and what would happen is I would get up really quickly and the pocket clip would be caught and then I would get I would get up fast and pull on this thing and sometimes it would stop me dead and other times it would just come out of my pocket and what happened over time is that it just sheared through this plastic just cut right through it it's in this great position to just fucking 
it's like a paper cutter just just dragged it all the way sideways um i ended up flipping it to the other side <laughs> and we're just wearing it on the other side uh this is before i knew you know i didn't know how to knife fight or anything so i didn't you know, really care which way the blade was oriented um but that's an issue with these knives can be an issue was an issue for me how about that i still have that endura i uh, probably should have brought it with me but you know i didn't plan this review so um or i don't know is, is it even really a review i don't know I, and i'm just talking i'm just talking it's more like story time gear story time in my opinion um uh but i had a problem with that thing shearing off so you know there's sometimes i don't keep this knife in my pocket for just that reason because i don't want to fucking catch on my couch and fucking get ruined um and the new uh style um uh enduras have triple pins or not pins but triple screws and i think that's a much better system it's probably going to be a stronger system and it's not going to um break as uh, or cause any you know it, it'll just be better god damn it it'll, i think it's better better I've gotten it caught a couple times and it didn't fucking shear through the side of my knife. You know what I'm trying to say. Uh, I also kind of wish that I had the yellow one, man. This was an impulse buy. Paid too much for it. <laughs> Should have gotten it cheaper. Um, but, you know, whatever. I got it now, right? It's a good little tool, but I could eventually see it being replaced. And it, and it, and it definitely has some competitors. Especially if you don't need, if you don't like the wave, and don't want to <laughs> make your own wave and need all this excess uh, material up top that the Spyderco has, man. If you want an outdoorsy blade, like a folding blade, dude, I, dude, I'm, do you think about that landslide? That landslide is not a hundred percent rust-proof because some of the fittings are not a um, rust-resistant steel, but that blade is a rust-resistant steel, man. Uh, you know, I'll probably pick one of those up eventually and put it put it to a little bit of salt water test and see what happens. Because I bet you that thing's going to hold up pretty good. It's also got um, a real forward swept blade, and I found that uh, with the Azula, uh, the forward sw swept blade was really handy. Uh, not as good as the uh, as the Scandi grind, but if you could get a Scandi grind and a forward swept great blade, well, you might be in business then. Maybe a convex would do it too. I don't know. Um, but then Benchmade has got some good uh, um, rust-resistant uh, knives, and then all those Fox knives. Uh, they won't advertise it, you know, because it it for I don't know why they won't fucking advertise it. But they don't bill them as rust-resistant knives. But a lot of them are made from rust-resistant materials, and might be a superior um, uh, outdoors blade for you adventuring blade uh and and another thing is um to be brutally honest uh a lot of these super rust resistant steel, steels are overkill i've rolled out with vg10 dozens and dozens and dozens of times and it hasn't rusted up on me at least not enough to be a big deal not like not like your fucking 1095 will you know and uh get my hand i'm pretty bad about putting my hand in the camera aren't i um, but I got a, um, I just have a full flat grind, um, Endura, orange handled Endura in my, in my ribs pack for going out now. That's a fucking folding knife I use. And it, dude, VG10 works fine. Sometimes it's, it's a little bit of overkill to be wanting these, you know, fucking other steels, these unbelievable rust proof steels like this one. And dude, if you haven't seen it, guys, go look it up, dude. Like there is some fucked up shit. <laughs> that they put these fucking little blades through. <laughs> Man, they are seriously, seriously rust resistant. Um, but you know what? Not everybody is fucking, you know, like a fisherman <laughs> fishing the sea, you know, or in a coastal environment, you know. I'm nowhere near the effing coast. Central Texas, shit. VG10, i probably drop it in that stream over there. In fact, here, why don't we do this? Just for fun. I'll have to get my feet wet to get it again, but in the mud, no big deal. That's how not worried about it I am. And I could probably do the same thing with my VG10, and it would be fine, but I'm I'm more confident with this one. So, I mean, you know, maybe a, maybe a, 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 having a better steel is cool, too. It's probably a second kind of cool that I can do that. 
I better not forget it there. I cannot see it very well. <laughs> it is buried itself in the mud. Um, but, um, meh. That's what I had to say about that. Okay, I I'm going to slide getting this thing back out of here. So, <laughs> I was going to pick it up for you, have you guys see it on the other side, but I'm worried. Here, maybe I can just ease on down there. I was trying not to slip. There we go. Sliding. As you can see, the knife's flying. Rinse that bad boy out. There it is. It survived the trip. Anyways, had fun, guys. See ya.